Uh, for the facility, Albi Buerta, an SABC specialist researcher, Maswele Ralibona. Thanks so much to both of you for joining us this morning. And uh, welcome to you too, Ms. Buerta. Um, Maswele, I want to start with you in terms of just how the story came to light. And, uh, you know, we saw, for example, one of the people you spoke to there uh, who was hired to work at this facility talking about whistleblowers and whistleblowers being killed. So how did we come across the story? Thank you, Sakina. Thank you for having me. Um, um, Aubrey, Aubrey, the guy you saw on the package there, he came here last week and he had a placard with him outside the building, outside the SABC, saying, SABC, help our elderly. So we, myself and my colleague, Veli, we took it upon ourselves to go and approach him as to why are you here? What's the, what, what's the, what's the problem? And then he started explaining what has been happening at the <coughs> Uh, upon his explanations, we asked our uh, management uh, if they can give us a chance to go and visit the facility to see for ourselves. Uh, we, took a, we took a trip to uh, Mutlaking, we <coughs> went to see, and then we came back, we explained what we saw, and that's why you see today we've got the, the story rolling on our, on our, on our channel. So just in terms of what you found, and... Um I remember you um, and Veli coming to see me with some of the financials uh, for this particular facility. Yeah. Let's talk about that and what has happened. Because this facility was launched in 2012, then it was launched again in 2019. Yes. And I don't even understand what that means, how you launch the same facility several times. But what is actually going on and why is it that there have not been any patients housed at the facility since it's been launched. When you do a quick Google search, you'll find that this facility was commissioned during the time of uh, MEC Mandla and Gonfe. Uh, the, 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 according to those records, it shows that it was budgeted for 27 um, million rand in, tw in 2009 and uh, completion in 2012. And then since then, there's been renovations, there's been other, uh, there's expensive furniture, as you saw. And then what we also saw is that it's a state-of-the-art facility. What we didn't see on our first visit was the, as you know, we are journalists, and uh, Aubrey, who was showing us around, didn't have much information as to why it's not being uh, occupied, it was that uh, on our second visit, we saw some um, drainage problems, uh, some beds in, in, the, in, the, in the facility uh, didn't, have, um, didn't have legs. And when we asked, it was because there was, there, was, there was water leaks and it affected the furniture, which means the department, what they can do now is to see, is to, is to, is to send more and more uh, beds in that area of which after some time they will uh, be destroyed by rain or whatever and it's a it's a it's a, it's a continuous continuous thing that the department has been renovating the facility but they haven't been doing the right things uh, when we spoke to El Boda, she indicated the about seven points that needs to be adhered to before the facility can open. But the department, as we speak now, there are renovations that are taking place, but those renovations does not cover the, the requirements for the facility to open. So money is being spent. There are no um, uh, people, elderly people, Yes. housed at the facility one, yes. but people have been hired to work at the facility. Are they actually working? Um, the, the records we saw shows that there are about 20 uh, em em employees. Aubrey is one of those who were employed in 2019, uh, August, uh, as an admin clerk. And when he arrived there, he, show, he saw that why, he started asking himself, why am I here? And there are no patients to to, to look after. There were employees who were reporting, some reporting to him, some uh, uh, he, he was, as you can see he can, he's, he's got access to financial records. Uh, people were drawing salaries and all sorts of things. Then that's when he started asking questions. We are all here but there are no 
patients. patients. Then uh, what we discovered is that in 2021, when uh, the department hired LB Boulder to take care of the, or to, to be the administrator of the facility, she took it upon herself to take those employees upon realizing that these are, care, are, are, are supposed to be care, care workers, but they don't have the skills. They can't even take uh, BP, blood pressure. They can't even do blood sugar. So why are they here? Even if we bring in the patients, who is going to provide those basic uh, medical care to these uh, employees. As we speak now, um, uh, th those employees, about 19 of them, if I'm not mistaken, they are in uh, Friendship Haven, owned by LB Boulder, uh, training. Uh, that's what we are told, that they are training so that by the time the facility opens, they are able to do the, the basics. Albi Buta is with us, so let's find out from Albi, who is the administrator uh, for this uh, Mutlaking uh, prototype uh, 20 old age home. Albi, thanks so much for being with us this morning. So let's start by when you were asked to uh, be the administrator for this facility. Um, what was the scope uh, for your appointment at the time? Good morning. Um, as I said previously, it was basically to get the administrative part of the um, old age home up and running. That's basic documentation, you know, like registering for SARS, um, uh, registering the UIF for the staff because there was no UIF. The policies and procedures that needed to come into place to make sure the constitution of the old age home is drafted and approved. And then the, the, the main... Um, thing was for me to create a board and train the board in how to take place or how to take care of, of such an old age home. I'm not the owner of French Payment, I'm, I'm the chairman of the board. Um, so obviously with a lot of experience that would have been easy to do. But um, once we started um, the process to get all of the documentation ready, and that is ready, that was ready almost a year ago, um, we then realized that the building um, is problematic for lack of a better word. Um, we then started pointing out to the department, we have Mr. Lobritz that is a resident at Friendship Haven that used to work for the municipality of Randfontein, very knowledgeable man. So we um, are seen to assist and we continuously send emails and photographs of what is wrong. So your first problem with this building is there is no approved building plans. None. So from there, you first now need approved building plans. Then you need COCs, a COC for the electrical installments, which is a disaster, a COC for the plumbing. Um, uh, uh, there is so many things outstanding, and without those COCs, you're looking at um, health and safety, the fire department. Without those things in place, no resident can enter that building. Um, it cannot be approved. So, yes, that is where we are at the moment. Um, administratively, the documentation is ready. The staff has been in training for a year. We thought it would be three, four months. Um, the reason why they remain in training is at least then they earn their salaries, where previously they were paid salaries until October of 2020, and then all of a sudden they were not paid. So when we took over, the first thing we did is to say that they are not paid in terms of the Labour Law, the Minimum Wage Act, we corrected that. We corrected their contracts. Please, in theory, um, the, until that building is um, corrected and fixed so that you can get your compliance certificates, it will stand there forever. So how long should that take realistically? Because, as you say, there are no building plans approved for this facility. And yet it was built at a cost, I think, initially of 27 million rand. It was opened. It was launched. And subsequent to that, every single year, there's been money spent on this facility. So how much would it take to make sure that it is compliant? Well, I jokingly said to the department at the time when they approached me and I realized the problems, I said to them, give me the money and I'll have it fixed for you in six months. Um, I should have been serious at the time. If you have the right people doing the work, um, it's, not, it's not unfixable. 
we have the right people doing the work. It should take three to four months to fix this. But it's been a year that we are involved. Our contract with the state, uh, with the Department of Social Development ends in March. I only gave them a year to, to, that I would um, spend on this. Um, but in March it ends, and then that building is still not fixed. So the, the department has a procurement process. You know, they first ask for um, quotations, then a procurement process. That takes months. So by the time, and now the last things that they did was to put up carports. Um, I immediately contacted them and said the quality of these carports was of such a nature that it's not one cent um, of value that was paid for them. I took photographs of it. I sent it to them. I believe I also sent it to your researcher. Um, the amount of money that was spent on it, that. Then they now started building a, a waste disposal unit. Um, I don't know why. It's also built in the wrong place. It's too close to the kitchen. And so you can't have that. So um, the frustration of this is that there is, I don't know, there is just no thought process behind the situation. Evidently not. Because yeah. why would you spend money on all of these things when the basics are not in place? in order to get yes. this particular building uh, fit for yes. purpose so that elderly people could be housed. But I want yes. to ask about the specific incident, uh, an instance that we saw on the clip where there's a renovation project to the kitchen. This is a facility that has never been used since it was launched in 2012, and yet you're spending half a million rand to renovate the kitchen. What's up with that? What's happening there? I have no idea. The department is in control of the building. Um, you know, so they do things at their time. We are not informed of what they are doing, who is doing it, what is it's costing. So our purpose as administrators was to get the the administrative set, side fixed, you know, the financials. So is that done? What you set out to do yes. as far as the workers are concerned, is that done? Yes. So let that me ask that. about those workers, because they are drawing a salary, have been drawing a salary, uh, yet they are not attending to any patients. How many workers yes. are there currently on the payroll and where are they? What are they doing? Well, there's 19 to the best of my knowledge. Um, Busi is the manager. She is at the Connie Miller Center with Ilona Ace, who's the COO and used to be their financial manager. Because to be the manager of a facility of this nature, you really need knowledge. So she is with Ilona being trained um, and every day still being trained. Um, the rest of the staff, with the exception of Aubrey, who's on the premises, um, because somebody needs to be at the premises, um, is at Friendship Haven. They are mostly caregivers. So as I said previously, the idea was that they would be with us for three and four months. Mm. Um, receiving training would, would really would have would help them when they go to the facility. So they are still there because at some stage I discussed this with the department and I said, well, if the building is not going to be ready, then you need to go through the legal process of either retrenching the staff or, you know, you can't just not pay them a salary. If you have a contract with them, you need to end that contract on a legal basis. They then said no. So um, I informed my labour consultant um, at Friendship Haven that she will have to inform those staff members that my contract with the department ends the end of March. So I don't know what is going to happen to the staff. But, but let me understand this. So the people who were employed to work at the Mutla King home are now at uh, Friendship Haven. Yes. So do they have a contract to work for Friendship Haven? When we uh, took over as administrators, they had contracts with the department. Um, and those contracts, firstly, my concern was that the salaries was less than the lab, um, Labor Act allows minimum wage. I get that, Ms. Porter, uh, but yes. obviously they there has to be a valid do. contract in place. Do they, they have do a contract to work for Friendship Haven? No. We so why are they working for Friendship Haven and why are they being paid? while they are not offering services to Mutla King. That is how the Department of, uh, of Social Development set it out because my request to them was to follow a process of retrenchment so that the staff then is unemployed and they declined to follow that route. Told me to put the staff into training because it is necessary 
and then the building will be fixed. Once again, I reiterate the fact that we all thought that that would be three or four months, and it is a year later. Isn't that unlawful, so though? That is a very technical question. You'll have to ask the lawyer. No, but wh why is it technical? Because, I mean, it's very clear. If I work for the SABC, I have a contract that states that I am in the employee of the SABC. All the labor relations um, uh, uh, regulations will apply. So why then is it technical? I believe, I believe if you do a training program, which this is, okay. so they are employed by Moflake. Ms. Buta, they are I want to give you sufficient time to explain that. So can I please ask yes. you, please, to please sit tight, please hold on. Um, we're going to have to park that there because we have to say goodbye to our SABC2 viewers. We need to take a quick break. We'll say goodbye, unfortunately, goodbye to our SABC2 viewers. And then uh, we'll just wrap this interview up with uh, Ms. Elbi Buta and Ms. Wille Ralibone. Uh, please stay with us here on SABC. And of course, we are talking about the developments at the Mutla Keng 20 prototype um, old age home and and this uh, facility was launched in 2012. There has not been a single patient uh, that has been housed at the facility. And yet, every year, renovations are happening, salaries are being paid, and there is a bill being racked up. We then had, uh, in 2019, Albi Buerta being um, uh, appointed as the administrator uh, for this uh, facility. And uh, we are in conversation with the administrator, Albi Buerta, and SABC specialist researcher, Masuele Ralibona, to find out exactly what is going on. And I must uh, just indicate, we have uh, uh, all so try to reach out to the department and we will speak to them. Uh, they have right of reply on this particular matter because the department also needs to explain from their side how all of this has been taking place on their watch. And uh, perhaps they have a different explanation. We'll hear when they actually come to speak to us about what's been happening at this facility. Uh, but before we went to the break, um, I was asking Ms. Buerta about the workers who were employed to work at the Musaking um, old age home who have since been um, uh, working at uh, the other facility. And I was asking about the legalities around that, whether it is lawful for people to be employed to work at one facility and actually work and get paid for working at another. And uh, you were saying before the break, uh, Ms. Wurta, that it's technical. And I was asking whether it's lawful. So let's just pick up on that point. Okay. Um, I have my labor consultant that works at Friendship Haven with me um, because obviously this is not my field of knowledge. The fact is the following. When we were approached, the and I reiterate the fact that we thought it was going to be for three or four months, the building will be opened, and we said, all right, let the staff come for training. Throughout this whole process, we are in consultations with the staff. We have meetings with them. We give feedback to them, etc. So one of the principles that can be taken is that the staff can be sent home and then on a no-work, no-pay situation. The discussion with the department and ourselves and the staff was that they are in training. And every time the date for opening the building is moved forward, um, the, obviously the staff remains because otherwise they are sent home, no work, no pay, which is unfair to the staff. They, they did nothing wrong here. So the Department of Labor, we approached the Department of Labor with this issue and said this is what's going on. They've been to our facility twice, that they have no issues. On the legalities, I cannot truly answer you and put my reputation on the line to say what the legalities is. I'm of the opinion that if the Department of Labor is satisfied with the process, then it should be legal. Um, as, I re as I said, our contract with the department ends the end of March, which means that the staff in all likelihood will be sent home with no work, no pay. This training with us will stop. So um, that's the best answer that I can give you. Our intention in this situation was to do good, not to do bad. So if there is a, a form of illegality to them being in training with us for all this time, it is not on a mala fide uh, premises from our side. So as I said, end of March, the contract ends. I don't know what the staff is going to do. Okay. So did the department then agree to the training of these workers at... Yes. Okay, so they agreed to the training. Uh, is the training accredited? 
Well, we are an accredited old age home. My COO is Sister Elia Ayners, who was the head of a nursing training facility. Um, I have some of the best staff that you can imagine. So I would think that, look, the, the, the caregivers, the training that they need is practical. The practicalities of how do you assist a, a fragile a resident to get out of a bed into a wheelchair? How do you bed wash them? How do you help them to go to a bathroom? How do you make sure that they do not get bed sores because they are lying in one position too long? So um, that is the, the practical training that they have been receiving from us. So okay. once they go back to Mohla King, they are well-trained caregivers, better trained than most of the ones that I appoint um, from the onset without any real knowledge. Yeah. So accredited um, Obviously, we are not a training facility, but we can give them the practical training of how to take care of the residents that they are ultimately going to take care of. So the short answer is that it is not accredited training. I will have um, just one moment. No, no, then it would not be deemed to be accredited. So on what basis then did the department enter into an agreement uh, with um, P, it's Peace Haven, is it? Uh, Friendship Haven. Friendship Haven. On what basis did the department enter into an agreement with Friendship Haven to have um, employees of the department receive training at a facility that is not accredited? Do you actually have that agreement in writing? You will have to discuss this with the department. Um, I agreed to be the administrator. We agreed that we all thought that it will be a month or two, you know, really. I mean, the, the problems that existed on the building at the time could have been taken care of by the end of March mm. if it wasn't for the process that they have to follow. So the fact that it has been drawn out, it was never the intention that the staff will be with us for this long. So, um, But would you agree, I mean, Ms. Porter, that the staff shouldn't have been with you in any event, they, they should not have been with you. If the department needed them to be trained, they should have been sent to an accredited facility. And as you pointed out right at the onset, your job, the scope for you as the administrator was to sort out the administrative part of this. So the fact that staff then end up at uh, this facility for training that is not accredited is equally problematic. I assume that you are right. Um, once again, it was at the time we thought a month or two that we'll be going to Moklake. Um You will have to take that up with the department why they have taken so long to get the staff back at Moklaking BTP, 2020 BTP. Um, the sad thing is, and I'm almost more human um, orientated than I am um, otherwise orientated. At the time, we thought the staff did nothing wrong. Um, to send them home without salaries um, at the time during COVID would have been, in my point of view, unusually cruel. Um, they would have no income with, with their families. So for us, the money is allocated for salaries. Now you send them home, no work, no pay. Or you take them in, you pay them their salaries per hour that they legally work, and you train them in the meantime to do the basics, to do the basics. Um, if, if that is deemed to be a problem, it is a problem that should be taken up with the department. I I, 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 we, we certainly will do that. But and, and, and I fully get what you are saying. I, I understand where you are coming from and saying that this was well intentioned. However, your good intentions now seem to have also morphed into something problematic as far as uh, some of the expose that is being done here with regard to uh, this facility at Mutla King and monies that are being spent. Because what it looks like, essentially, is that you have people who are getting paid, are getting paid to work at Mutla King old age home, who are now working at Friendship Haven and getting paid. So that means that Friendship Haven is essentially deriving benefit 
unduly because people are getting paid for working at your facility when they've actually been employed to work at another facility. I would have to agree with that. And you don't think there's anything wrong with that? Once again, the, the request from the department to, um, to do, be the administrators, when it came to the staff, it comes back to the fact that it is the building. I hear you and I will give instructions immediately that they be sent home with immediate effect. So we are going to have to park it here for today. And I say for is today because we, we're going to bring the department in because I think the department has a lot to answer for here. Yes, Ms. Bota? May I just say that in you, you're talking about the millions. The staff salaries at this stage is 90,000 rand a month. That is what is being paid to 19 staff members. Um, that works out to 270,000 rand every third month that is paid in, in accordance with the SLA. So it is of all of the money that is being spent at Moklaking at the moment, to do the right thing to the staff is the minor problem that you have. So I hear what you are saying, that it is a level of wrong. It will be corrected this morning that they will be sent home to say, um, we are sorry, it's been indicated to us that it is wrong for you to be here. Go home, no work, no pay. And mm. then the this but, out. but Ms. Buta, you, you, you spoke of a consultant that you have. How come the consultant couldn't see that this is wrong? How come the consultant well, uh, didn't pick up on this? this? Our consultant and the Department of Labor, uh, who has been with us twice, do not deem this to be wrong. I'm not going to get involved in... Uh, in a, a situation where I do not have the right advice with me on the legalities of it. If you are saying that you feel that the training of the staff and the paying of the staff while the building is not fit for occupation is wrong, then I'll take your cue and correct it. Absolutely, because when those workers walk out of there, what are they walking out with? They've been nothing. with your facility for how long? As you say, they walk out with nothing. So what has been the point of the training then? No, the training will stand them in good stead. The training can never be taken away from them. But you can't the even give them a piece of paper that, that would um, uh, bear witness to the fact that they actually did go through this training. They have nothing to take with them. That answer, um, when you asked me for the interview, if you had indicated to me that this would be a question, I would have had time to prepare myself and get the advice in that I would need to really answer on this. So I'm a little bit blindsided by this um, side of the questioning um, because the problem is the building. The, I understand the money is a huge problem, but this is a minor problem. If you had indicated to me, and your people can come back to me, I will get the answers for this. But if you had indicated to me that this would be a line of questioning, I would have prepared myself for it. I'm mm. unprepared to answer uh, the Were you not prepared to reality. answer? Were you not prepared to answer about the workers and what had happened to them? Yes, of course. But, so this um, is about the workers, Ms. Buerta. We're talking about the workers. So I don't yes, understand yes. when you say you're being blindsided. We are talking about what happened to the workers. All right. I'm talking about the technicalities, the legalities. I, and we, I come back to the fact that we thought we were doing the right thing. We thought we were doing the good thing um, by at least having the people... Um, earning their salaries, receiving basic training for caregivers um, that you need. Um, I will have to ask whether or not we can um, give them something, I don't know. Um, and we will, obviously. Um, but I was a little bit unprepared yeah. for this question. I can't yeah. answer it to you. Well, we'll, we'll I, I come back to, to it. But I can't. We'll come back to yeah. it. But from your um, own admission, whatever you give them, will not be worth the paper it's written on because this is not an accredited training facility. Which is true. Absolutely. So let's but leave it, it there for not, today. It was also not the deal with the department, by the way. So how the, did they the arrive at this place if it wasn't uh, a, a, an agreement with the department? Um, I would suggest that you ask the department what our original thought process was. And coming back to the fact that this was supposed to be three months, more than a year past. 
we will indeed do just that. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Albi Buerta, who's the administrator for the uh, Mutlaking uh, 20 prototype older, old age home. Uh, Ms. Willie, we'll have to end it with you. As you heard what uh, Ms. Buerta was saying there about the salary bill, and given the financials that we've seen, yes. uh, there's obviously a discrepancy there. Yes, yes. Um, the, every, everything that has been done uh, from that uh, facility uh, from 2012 until this day shows that everything is, is wrong. The fact that they can't go to the municipality, Ms. Botha and the department cannot go to the municipality and find the person who approved the plans the person who approved the electrical wiring. They don't know who approved the connection to the grid. of the, That facility doesn't have a municipality utility bill, as we speak. Um, I mean, that facility, the old age home, doesn't have a municipality utility bill. That's a problem, because <laughs> it, it, it just indicates the shenanigans that have been happening there. Right now, Ms. Bother is the administrator, but the people who are on site working, uh, putting up those uh, garbage facilities, cleaning the, the, painting the kitchen and other stuff, she's not in control of that. They were just sent from the department. Somebody from the department signed and said, you, 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 go and uh, did, uh, uh, remove the ceiling and put a new one in that facility, which means, uh, uh, and all the, 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 the renovations that are taking place at this point have nothing to do with compliance. So this is the story that we've been working on here at SABC News. And we will follow up. Uh, the department needs to give us their side of the story because there are so many questions. A facility that was launched in 2012 hasn't seen a single patient yet it has incurred costs every year to the taxpayers expense the same facility was launched again in 2019 and now we have an administrator in place staff still being paid the administrator says they were uh, uh, being paid rates that were not even at the minimum uh, basic employment rate but all of these questions need to be answered along with the training that subsequently also happened at a facility not accredited to deliver such but thank you so much uh, to our specialist researcher here at the SABC Masuli Ralibona and of course Albi Buerta was the administrator at uh, the uh, Musa King 20 prototype old age home we'll continue with the story and hopefully we'll have the department to give us their side of the story